Hello everyone, my name is Dan Stevens and I'm a Tax Technology Solutions Manager with Avalara. I'm very pleased to be here with you today and very happy that we've been able to assemble a panel of experts including Tom Forbes from Metapack. Today we're going to talk about an upcoming peak selling season, what we're seeing with customer trends and our top six tips of what retailers can do to navigate the current economic climate and still make the most of upcoming peak trading periods and beyond. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the chat um, and somebody will try and answer them during this session. If we're unable to answer that question, we'll um, get back to you and answer those afterwards. So without delay, I'd like to introduce you to our panel. First of all, Tom, would you like to go first? Certainly, thanks Dan. Hello, my name's Tom Forbes. I'm Senior Vice President of Carriers at Metapack. Um, at Metapack, we connect retailers with carriers and curate all aspects of the delivery experience. At least 20% of the shipments on our platform are cross-border, so a fantastic opportunity to, to talk together today with Avalara. Thank you. Great. Next, over to you, Vincenzo. Thanks, Dan. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Vincenzo Castronovo, Tax Technology Solution Manager with Avalara, and I'm very uh, pleased to be uh, with you all here today and have the chance to talk about some important topics around global selling tips. As you can see in the slide, Avalara is a multinational company market leader in tax compliance automation solutions for businesses across the world. Avatax is our flagship tax engine that provides real-time tax calculation in 193 countries. Great, thanks Vincenzo. And it's also worth mentioning that Avatax, the solution, integrates with over a thousand business systems and partners uh, to accurately calculate those taxes and duties. Um, this means wherever merchants raise their invoices, they can present the true landed cost to their cross-border customers. So just to cover off what we're going to be talking about today, uh, these list of these six topics that were here. Uh, first one, keep on top of important selling dates, make your supply chain flexible, use the right HS codes, focus on post-purchase experience, and be aware of sales tax thresholds before selling, and lastly, take advantage of compliance implication rules. Okay, well brilliant, great to have you all here today, thank you for joining. Our first tip is to keep on top of important selling dates. So Vincenzo, could you share a few of those with us please? Sure then, um, so retailers always try to maximize their sales during the whole year. However, there are particular dates in specific regions where we see a peak due to consumers' shopping preferences and incentives promoted in, in those regions. The first date that always come to our minds is, of course, you know, the Christmas shopping. EU shoppers prefer to start Christmas shopping before November, so retailers selling uh, into the EU will need to ensure they can handle high volume sales as early as October. Similarly, in January uh, is the biggest uh, peak selling period in the UK, so any preparation for the Christmas e-commerce peak season should be maintained and carried over into the new year. Other examples are Les Sold in France. Uh, there are two regulated sales periods throughout the year, one in summer and one in winter. Les Sold are nationally mandated, meaning that all shop must reduce the prices for the selling dates. Uh, the same thing happens in Italy also. There are single days of sales as well. For instance, in the US, we have the Black Friday and the Cyber Monday, or in Asia, the Double Eleven, which occurs on 11 uh, of November, which is the highest grossing say, uh, day in e-commerce. A Salesforce research about how inflation will shape also um, holiday shopping this year found that 42% more shoppers worldwide plan to start buying gifts earlier. This is the number one behavioral change this holiday due to inflation. They hope to, to get their holidays gift, of course, before prices rise too much. Back to you, Dan. Thanks, Vincenzo. Okay, so during peak season, the increase in volume puts an enormous strain on your supply chain. And if you've not made adequate preparations, you may still struggle to fulfill orders on time. So I think the question for you, Tom, here is, can you tell us about a successful supply chain strategy to navigate this uncertainty and then how to deal with those supply chain disruptions? Sure, Dan. Um, I think this year is, is probably uh, unique uh, in terms of the level of challenge that everyone's facing. Um, the, the macroeconomic situation and the geopolitical one are both very well documented. I think 
uh, from a Metapack perspective, uh, as we look at the final mile uh, of delivery, what's been really interesting is, uh, is seeing what's unique uh, in that aspect this year. So like all years, uh, we put together our annual e-commerce delivery benchmark report. This year we did that uh, with retail economics. And uh, the, the research was fascinating this year because one of the key things that highlighted was the mismatch between the relative optimism of retailers and the actual pessimism of their consumers, um, which tells us that I think we're in for quite a bumpy time. I think there's some other indicators around uh, the challenge. So we've read all year about the challenge for operators, whether that be the retailers own warehouses or whether it be the carriers struggling with uh, lack of labor, price of labor, price of fuel. And we're starting to see that play out, um, not least in uh, the strikes that unfortunately Royal Mail are experiencing. Uh, if you go onto their, their website today, you'll see that the strikes we've experienced so far uh, are the tip of the iceberg, uh, assuming they go ahead, uh, as indicated by the, the various unions. And that's going to put a lot of pressure, particularly for, for UK retailers on their, their domestic um, uh, fulfillment operations. At the same time, uh, retailers looking to contain cost are reviewing things like uh, free delivery, uh, also looking at changing delivery timeframes, and, and how to put promotions in place. So in many ways, you've got a bit of a perfect storm this year, which is you've got a lot of cost pressure and also the absence of sales uh, predicted uh, through our, our report. And then if I link that to the international perspective, uh, we've seen some interesting things. So for example, uh, we saw sales to uh, uh, international regions X UK uh, dropping from 20, uh, 2020 to 2021. And I think Brexit and the implementation of IOSS were, were clearly behind that. Um, I do think that it's you know essential for any retailer to be looking at, uh, at overseas markets, not least uh, with the recent drop in the, pra drop in the pound, uh, well advertised around the world. And historically we know from our data that uh, when the pound is low, uh, people are keen to, to buy from uh, UK retailers. So I think it's, uh, it's a definite opportunity out there uh, if retailers are in a position uh, to capitalize on it. Cool, good, thank you. Um, another key driver for improving customer experience is, is using the right HS codes. Um, at Avalara, we do have the facility to classify HS codes. Um, but I think, Vincenzo, you've got a slide to kind of show us on this. Yes, uh, sure then. Um, so when businesses sell and ship internationally across borders, they face, of course, a few challenges. Uh, the most common that we can see in these slides are shipment delayed in customs, added supply chain costs, accurate calculation of international duties and taxes, poor user experience of international cross-border uh, shoppers, and of course, the customers uh, ultimately rejecting shipments. Many countries, of course, do not charge uh, custom duties or import taxes for orders below a certain threshold. This threshold is called de minimis. The de minimis applies to custom duties, import taxes, or both. Uh, the rules are usually different for duties and taxes, and they are country-specific. Um, we can see some examples in the table on the right-hand side of this slide. Um, for example, Canada applies duties on orders over 150 uh, Canadian dollars and import taxes over 40 Canadian dollars. France applies duties over 150 euros and import taxes on any amount. UK duties on 135 pounds plus and import taxes on any other amount. US has the highest in the world for duties, it's 800 dollars but import taxes are due for any amount. So how can a business calculate and assign the correct custom duties and import taxes? The answer is with the harmonized system codes, in short, HS codes. The HS code is a nine to 12 numeric code designed to globally classify traded products. The first six digits are universal. Uh, they are the same uh, for all countries for a specific product. Uh, product. The last two to six digits are country-specific, as we can see in the example of the orange in this slide. 
Mapping HS codes is a prerequisite to calculate custom duties accurately. HS codes, of course, are not made by Avalara, but they are defined and regulated by countries and the World Custom Organization. So, of course, the accuracy of the HS code is critical. Uh, getting it wrong can create a few problems and have a negative impact on the sale. Um, for example, incorrect custom paperwork will lead to shipments held up in customs, potential fines and surcharges, overpayment of custom duties. Another problem is duties calculated incorrectly. Uh, for example, if the seller is charging too much, we will have card abandonment, increased rate of product rejections, or on the other hand, if the seller is charging too little, of course the seller will have lower margins due to under collections of custom duties. Uh, Tom, um, what is your experience uh, on these topics? It can go badly wrong. Um, and I, I think it's very important to take a professional advice around uh, the HS codes. As you've alluded to, uh, there is some interpretation around the edges and it's very important to be, to be sure in which code you're using and why in case you need to provide the backup rapidly. Um, if there is uh, a dispute at customs um, when, uh, when product is checked against its HS codes, Typically, the carrier, who's used usually as the customs broker in the flow, is very keen to get uh, the parcels moving again and is usually uh, keen that uh, the exporter or the importer of record should quickly pay whatever excess charges are due to get things moving. Um, this can cause quite a bit of tension uh, between the retailer and the carrier. Uh, it can also, of course, lead to a very poor consumer experience. Um, it can be very costly for a retailer to, to reship things, particularly if it's a misunderstanding over an HS code uh, as opposed to an error. So um, super, super important uh, to know which HS code to use and also to have the backup for why you've chosen the particular one. Why is it a medical shoe, not a ballet shoe, etc., etc. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for sharing your experience. Also, the use of a specific product can affect the, the, the determination of the correct HS code and the duty as a consequence. Uh, in the example of the shoe in this slide, uh, we see that the last four digits of the HS code for Canada are different if the shoe is considered a medical or a ballet shoe, a female shoe or slippers. And the duty difference, as you can see, is 18% across all three definitions. Uh, the other example of the backpack on the right hand side for European Union, is it a travel bag, is it a music case, is it other, another type of bag? So the last four digits again of the HS code are different and the duty will vary by 7%. So we can see how much of a financial impact this can have. Back to you then. Great, thanks Vincenzo. So using the right HS code ensures goods are delivered on time, but that's only really part of the story. The peak selling season is due to start a lot earlier than planned this year. However, it will be marred by slower consumer spending and rising costs. Retention is crucial to protect investment in customer acquisition and ensure a share of that reduced consumer spend. Getting the post-purchase experience right will be more important than ever. So Tom, could you tell us more about the importance of the post-purchase experience? And in online shopping, what are the key drivers? Absolutely. Um, so if we think about uh, that experience as a consumer, um, you know, the, the worst examples are if your product is late or lost, or if you really fundamentally don't understand the tracking data. Uh, these are some of the problems. And I guess the opportunity uh, is to make it a delightful experience, which is accurate and clear and leads you to, to purchase again. So I think what Vincenzo was saying about HS codes is, is very pertinent in this uh, arena. Uh, at Metapack, we sit between the retailers and the carriers and pass from the retailer to the carrier that HS code data to make sure that customs flow very, very smoothly uh, and that you avoid those late and, and lost um, uh, parcels. We know from our research that uh, e-commerce delivery benchmark uh, report that I mentioned earlier, uh, what consumers look for in that delivery. So of course they're interested in the cost of the delivery and the speed, uh, but then hot on the heels of that are convenience, uh, which is 
getting the delivery option that they want and the choice of that delivery option, and then very swiftly into the ability to return it um, and the visibility of it. We, uh, we know that um, the localization experience is also incredibly important. So particularly for shoppers shopping cross-border, they actually want the same delivery features that they enjoy from the domestic operators. And um, we've had a, a lot of interest from, from carriers, the likes of UPS, DHL, APG, really making sure that our platform is able to offer that sort of look and feel of a domestic shipment, even though it's traveling across borders, uh, customs are being processed, HS codes are being passed in the background, that when it comes to convenience, all of us as consumers uh, know our preferences. And I think also linking back to what we were talking about earlier with peak season, I think out of home uh, delivery is becoming uh, increasingly something that people look to. So if you take markets like uh, France and Germany and the Nordics, out of home delivery is, is you know, uh, an essential component. Um, the challenge for the retailer can be how to offer that. So we have uh, one product called Delivery Options, which interfaces directly with the checkout to confirm what is available um, uh, as a shipping option for each and every order. And then uh, to come back to your question, looking at the post-purchase side, as a consumer, it can be a challenge when you're getting lots and lots of uh, delivery messaging from the carrier, particularly if it's disjointed, as it can be with cross-border shipments. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that parcels can go dark for a large period of time. Uh, what we do at Metapack is we make sure that we pull together all of that tracking information, which can be from two different networks or more, can also include a, a customs broker and present it in an intelligible way and also do it with the look and feel of the, um, the retailer in a product that we call Delivery Tracker. We know from our, our data that if you can create that wonderful post-purchase experience, that on the operation side, you can reduce where are my order calls by around 40%. It's hard to predict the exact effect of a, a great post-purchase experience on a repeat order, but getting everything right is absolutely key. And this is super important in the cross-border space where the rapid manipulation of large amounts of data is key, as is uh, understanding the rules. Back to you, Dan. Great, that was really good. Thanks, Tom. Um, so that's quite a good segue into our kind of next tip. Um, so selling across borders can create an unexpected tax obligations. So it's important to be aware of those, those sales thresholds before you start selling into those new regions. Uh, being tax compliant ensures your business can focus on maintaining that revenue and increasing customer satisfaction. A good strategy to help avoid fines, especially if you're already dealing with the impact of inflation and the stress of peak sales season. Um, so Vincenzo, I think it's quite a good way to kind of explain a few of those thresholds that we have. Absolutely, Dan. So um, when businesses uh, sell internationally, uh, they should research and be aware of the sales threshold before they start selling. In other words, making sure where the seller has the obligation to charge VAT and which authority the taxes should be remitted to. For example, a business selling from UK to the EU uh, should research the different VAT rates between EU countries and how VAT returns work in the UK compared to the process in Europe and vice versa. Uh, the same thing applies, of course, to custom duties. Not every shipment is taxed on import. Under the de minimis threshold, let's remember, shipments are cleared without incurring in custom duties and import taxes. And also, uh, let's keep in mind that some countries don't have the de minimis, so everything is taxed. Some other countries don't have custom duties, so nothing gets taxed. Let's talk about selling into the US a bit more in detail as the rules around sales tax are quite different and can add some more complexity. So what is the sales tax? The sales tax is uh, the indirect tax on the sale of goods and services to the end buyer. Unlike VAT and GST, the sales tax is only charged in the final transaction with the final customer and applies to B2C, B2B and B2G transactions. The seller is always responsible for calculation, collection and remittance of the tax to the appropriate 
authorities. So it is crucial for a business to know where and when they need to charge sales tax. Um, to, do, to do that, um, a business needs to understand where and when they have a connection and a tax obligation with the state. This is called nexus. Nexus can be triggered um, through physical presence or economic activity. Common triggers for physical nexus are having offices, using warehouses, I mean their own warehouses, having employees, using servers, storing inventory also in a third party warehouse, doing installation, uh, having employees traveling within the state or across different states, attending trade shows or advertising. So if one or more of those factors exist, the seller needs to register for sales tax in that state right away. In 2018, uh, the famous dispute between Wafer Inc. and the state of South Dakota established that states can also require registration to remote settlers, so to those businesses who do not have a physical presence in their state. States have established uh, specific rules and sales thresholds, uh, which are different, of course, state by state, so it is important for businesses to research and monitor those thresholds. There are also some factors that sellers must consider. Most states include exempt sales in the threshold. Uh, states don't need to notify sellers when breaching a threshold. It is the seller's responsibility to monitor. Notice and reporting requirements are different per state, and of course penalties for non-compliance can be very severe. Back to you then. Great, thanks Vincenzo. And, I, and this neatly laid Sorry, this neatly then leads on to our final tip, uh, which is taking advantage of some compliance simplification. Um, so the next step is once you've hit these thresholds is to then ensure you're registered with the appropriate tax authorities. Uh, so it's important to find these simplification schemes wherever possible to save time and money and essentially eliminate errors in, in reporting. So Vincenzo, I think we've got two that we're going to share today, which was the IOS and SST. Um, yes, of course, then. Uh, before then, uh, let's quickly see this slide, you know, um, let's say tax compliance is one of the most serious and stressful topics for business leaders. Mm -hmm. So this uh, CEBR report says that a third of UK business leaders have lost sleep uh, due to tax compliance issues and two thirds agree that tax compliance is, a, is the most stressful thing about running their business. So it is a topic that needs to be taken care of all the time. So when selling into Europe, it is important to choose the right shipping model. Um, we know that last year in July, the EU launched uh, the simplified schemes, OSS and IOSS. The IOSS, the import Watson shop, uh, allows non-resident EU companies to distant sell goods into the EU market. It allows companies to sell across all 27 um, EU countries under the one registration, as well as manage filings and returns across the EU. Companies must be importing goods into the EU direct to consumers for sale and the value of those orders must be under 150 euro threshold and this applies to B2C sales. The OSS, the one-stop shop, uh, allows non-EU resident company to trade across the EU as long as their goods are already within the EU meaning that they are manufactured, stored, and then distributed across the EU. OSS also allow to sell digital services across all the EU countries because, of course, um, companies are not importing anything physical into the EU, and so OSS will be the right solution for them. There are also shipping models for duties and import taxes to consider. We have DAP, duty at place, meaning that duties and import VAT is paid once the product has been delivered to the country the customer is in, meaning that the customer will be responsible for that. DDP is delivery duty paid, meaning that duties and import VAT has been dealt with and paid at the point of checkout, meaning the company selling the good is responsible. Uh, so in the end, uh, businesses need to choose the right model that is cost effective and provide the best possible customer experience. Uh, in this slide, let's see some, some of the numbers of Avalara IOSS uh, data uh, 12 months on since the, pro, uh, since the program uh, war, uh, was implemented. Uh, so we had 6.6 uh, .6 million number of transactions, we had uh, 193 million total sales, 
um, 33 million euros in VAT paid to the authorities and uh, an average order value of 29 euros. So a statement from the CEBR report after the implementation of ISS says that 94% of respondents uh, stated that the volume of positive feedback increased and particularly in the retail sector there is a rate of 100% of positive feedback. So there is one more thing I wanted to mention as uh, Dan, you, you said that before, um, about selling into the US is the SST program. Uh, the Streamline Sales and Use Tax Agreement is an effort by state and lo local governments to simplify the sales tax compliance for SST registered businesses. So if a business uses a certified service provider for tax compliance automation, the member states of the SST program will take on the financial cost of that supplier's fees. So Avalara is a founding member of this program and a certified service provider, meaning that our customers benefit from a huge amount of savings in the sales tax compliance in all member states. Today, we count uh, 25 member states in the SST agreement. Of course, this program is particularly beneficial for businesses operating in multiple states. Back to you then. Great. Thank you very much, Vincenzo. Um, so that's coming to the end of our, our webinar today. Um, just wanted to know if there's any other further thoughts from yourself, Tom, before we, we sign off. Yeah, I'd like to build a little on uh, the US market. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a great time for retailers to be looking at the US market again. Um, we might recognize planes that we've seen at the airport from the likes of DHL and FedEx who use their own branded planes. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the other carriers use the space available underneath passengers in uh, commercial aircraft. As flights are starting again, the cost of air freight will come down, the speed of transit into the States will come down as a result. Um, and I think Vincenzo made the point uh, very well about how important it is to get uh, all of the, the data right, uh, because that will give you the maximum choice in terms of uh, which carrier partners to work with. And uh, I think the US market is a, another great example of a market in which it's very important to localize the delivery experience. So yeah, a fantastic time to look at the States, I would say, as an expert market. Great, excellent. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to both Vincenzo and Tom for joining us today. Um, any questions that you uh, put in the chat, we'll endeavor to answer them if you've not had a response already. Um, our email addresses will be at the end of this slide deck, um, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Thank you very much.